Ageism has always been a problem in the cutthroat K-pop industry, with idols often debuting in their teens and retiring by the time they're in their twenties. 스물여덟 아이돌 하기에는 나이가 은퇴할 나이인 것 같은데. That being said, there have been more and more idols breaking these norms and remaining successful even well into their thirties, which has given rise to sayings like "30 is the new 20." But what if I told you that there was once an idol who actually took this phrase a bit too literally? Greetings, professors! Today we'll be talking about the unbelievable story of Yi Gai. And oh my gosh, this idol managed to fool the entire nation and join one of K-pop's top girl groups disguised as a fresh-faced 20-year-old. That was until fans discovered the shocking truth that she was in fact a whole decade older. <gasps> I mean, this sounds like one of those stories that came straight out of a movie. But before we jump into it, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Cluebox. So if you've been following my channel for long enough, then you probably know how much I like Cluebox. But for those of you who aren't filled in yet, Cluebox is a K-pop subscription box containing tasty Korean snacks and merchandise from your favorite K-pop groups. Now I've previously tried the BTS, the Blackpink, and the Espa Clube boxes before, but this time I decided to try something new with the ITZY Clube box. So let's open it up together and take a look at what's inside. Every single Clube box is different and they're constantly updating their merchandise, so opening up your box is always a really nice surprise. Clued Box is also really customizable because you can not only pick your favorite group, but also your bias. Which means you guys kind of know who my favorite ITZY member is now. But anyways, aside from that, you can also choose your clothing size and your dietary preferences, which I just think is so important because it makes the box inclusive to all K-pop fans. So if you haven't tried out Clue Box yet, then don't miss out on it. Be sure to check out the link in the description and use code PLUB678 for 5% off. Huge thanks once again to Clue Box, and without further ado, let's jump back into the video. Okay, so it was September of 1998, and there was a group called Baby Box that was currently going absolutely viral with their song Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya. Yeah. So just for some context, Baby Box was a rookie girl group that had actually debuted a year earlier in 1997, but had failed to make an impact thanks to their rebellious and edgy image. But this time, they had seemingly undergone a 180 degree transformation. So not only did they have three new members, they also completely changed up their concepts and went with like a cute and innocent image instead, which was actually really popular with the Korean public at the time. Everyone instantly fell in love with the new and revamped Baby box, and Ya 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 became the group's breakthrough hit. Seemingly overnight, this once unknown girl group was catapulted into the public spotlight. Ya 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 reached number 9 on the K-pop charts, the group was getting invited to music shows and interviews, and they even managed to win a couple of prestigious year-end awards. But with so many new eyes on them, this was also when some people began to notice something a little strange about one of the group's newest members, Yi Gai. You see, throughout the promotions for Ya Ya Ya, Yi Gai would always be seen wearing these large tinted sunglasses. Now of course, it's not uncommon to see K-pop idols wear accessories on stage, and you might be thinking that perhaps this was just a strange outfit choice, right? But the thing is, she would wear these sunglasses even off stage, such as during interviews and behind the scenes content. So that just made her look really suspicious, and people began to speculate that she was intentionally doing this to cover her eye area. This whole tinted sunglasses look lasted for months, but eventually it was slowly switched up for hats and beanies for Baby Vox's next single, Change. This was when fans were able to get a better look at Yi Gai's face for the first time, and many people couldn't help but notice that Yi Gai looked 
pretty mature for her age. According to the official profiles, Yi Gai was supposed to be 20 years old, making her around 2 to 3 years older than the other members. However, most people felt like she looked vastly older than the rest of her group, so much so that they began bullying her with nicknames like Ajuma, which means auntie in Korean. It also didn't help that Yi Gai seemed to struggle with her stamina and dancing abilities. Despite getting the least screen time and being hidden at the back during most of the group's performances, Yi Gai still stood out like a sore thumb, as she was often seen making mistakes on stage and was seemingly unable to keep up with the group's more intense choreographies. <laughs> But what was perhaps most suspicious of all was this interview that Baby Box did with famous soccer player Yi Dong Guk, during which Yi Gai can be heard addressing the 19 year old Yi Dong Guk as Opa, or older brother in Korean. <laughs> which, if you think about it, doesn't even align with the singer's supposed age of 20. All of this prompted people to dig further into Yi Gai's real identity and age, and a forum dedicated to this investigation was even opened on Baby Box's official fan cafe. Eventually, a netizen made the link between Yi Gai and a singer from way back in the 80s by the name of Yi Hee Jung. Not only did the two women look suspiciously similar, they also both graduated from the same university, and they even had the exact same birthday of July 19th. The only difference was that Yi Gai was born in 1978, while Yi Hee Jung was born a full decade earlier in 1968. So what the heck was going on here? Well, as you might have expected, the supposed 20-year-old Yi Gai was in fact 30-year-old Yi Hee Jung. And not only that, as it turns out, she had actually debuted not one, not two, but three other times prior to her stint with Baby Box. But how did things turn out this way? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to rewind over a decade all the way back to the beginning of Yi Gai, or rather Yi Hee Jung's tumultuous career. <laughs> See, it all started back in 1988 when Yi Hee Jung debuted for the first time in a three-member dance troupe called Setore. If you're wondering what a dance troupe is, by the way, they were essentially the precursors to the K-pop groups that we know of today, with many of them being heavily inspired by J-pop and Western pop genres. This was actually also the case with Setore, as they initially started out covering Japanese and American pop songs. Eventually though, they did go on to release their own original songs including I Love You and Hengboke. As Korea's first female dance troupe, Saturday gained quite a bit of attention. However, they also faced widespread hate, with many accusing them of copying Korea's first male dance troupe, Sobangcha, which had actually debuted a year earlier than Setore. And things were only made worse when Sobangcha and Setore eventually collaborated in a marriage-themed performance, which if you know anything about the craziness of first-generation boy group fans, was probably the worst concept they could have come up with. As you can imagine, Sobang Cha's fangirls were absolutely outraged that Setode was supposedly seducing their oppas. And before the night even ended, Setode's new car ended up getting vandalized by these fans. The hate campaign against Setode persisted for months, with these anti fans continuing to send death threats and harassing the members on a daily basis. Eventually, the hate got so bad that one of the members left the group and moved out of Korea altogether causing Setode to disband just one year after its debut. Following this, in 1991, the remaining two members, which included Yi Hee Jung and her bandmate Wu Yuna, re-debuted as a duo called Tam Tam. Tam Tam had a more mature concept than Setode, releasing the songs I Didn't Tell You and I'm So Stupid. 
but sadly, the group failed to make an impact and ended up disbanding just a few months later. Yi Hee Jung then went on to complete her studies at Dongguk University, graduating with a degree in theater and film. Having experienced two failed debuts so far, Hee Jung was originally planning to give up on being an entertainer and had instead started working behind the scenes as a backup singer for other artists. However, this was when she was spotted by an underground producer named Yoon Dong Ryong. Producer Yoon saw potential in Yi Hee Jung and persuaded her to join his then startup company, DR Music. Yes, for those of you wondering, this is the same mess of a company that debuted Rania slash Black Swan. And so, in 1993, Yi Hee Jung re-re-debuted as a soloist under DR Music with the stage name Yi Jisoo, releasing the album To You Who Forgot Me. Although the album consisted of several self-composed tracks which showcased Yi Hee Jung's piano and songwriting talents, the debut unfortunately went largely unnoticed, failing to generate any substantial sales. It was also around this time that Yi Hee Jung first attempted to fabricate her age, changing her birth date just slightly from July of 1968 to February of 1969. Now this would actually come to light when Hee Jung made a guest appearance on a variety show called Totoju. In the episode, she appeared alongside a dozen other female singers as they took turns showing their identity cards which actually sounds pretty unsafe in my opinion. But anyways, at the time, some viewers noticed that Yi Hee Jung's supposed birth date didn't match her actual birth date as shown on her identity card. However, the singer was lucky in a roundabout sort of way. Because she was so unknown and because she had only altered her age by less than a year, the situation mostly flew under the radar and was quickly forgotten by the public. Yi Hee Jung would then go on to release her next album, Sending You, in 1994, but sadly, this too proved to be a commercial failure. The release would mark the end of Yi Hee Jung's uneventful solo career, and following this, she would retreat out of the spotlight as she slowly but surely faded into obscurity. That was until she re-emerged freaking four years later in her new and evolved form as the one and only, the infamous Yi Guy of Baby Fox. To be precise though, things weren't supposed to happen this way. Now if you recall, Yi Hee Jung was only added to Baby Fox during the Ya 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 era, meaning that Baby Fox had initially debuted without Yi Hee Jung. But as it turns out, this wasn't meant to be the plan. Yi Hee Jung had always been intended to be part of the group's debut lineup, and as a matter of fact, she was actually recruited as the group's first member. You see, right around the time where Yi Hee Jung's solo career ended was when K-pop boy bands like H.O.T. and Zexkis were beginning to gain mainstream popularity. This inspired DR Music to create a female version of these boy bands, which was how the idea behind Baby Vox was first conceived. As the only artist under DR Music at the time, Yi Hee Jung was automatically recruited as the first member of the group, and the group's concept was actually partially formed around her. The company decided that since Hee Jung was already in her late 20s, it would make sense for Baby Box to go with an edgy, Spice Girls inspired concept, and so four other women who were all in their late teens or 20s were recruited to join her. The group began preparations for their debut, and things seemed to be going well at first, until just a few weeks before their scheduled debut, when Yi Hee Jung suffered a severe injury during dance practice and was forced to withdraw from the group last minute. Her position was swiftly replaced and the group went ahead with their debut, releasing the hip-hop inspired song Haircut in July of 1997. Unfortunately though, the song flopped as it was considered way too rebellious and unfeminine for the conservative standards of the time. Additionally, the group was also plagued with various internal conflicts, resulting in three members leaving the group. Realizing that Baby Vox were in need of a complete rebrand, DR Music attempted to think of a few other concepts that the group could take on. One of the early ideas that they settled on was a band concept, and this was when Yi Hee Jung came to mind. Now if you recall, Hee Jung could songwrite and play the piano, 
which made her the perfect addition for the band. And so the company reinstated Hee Jung into Baby Box, this time as a vocalist and keyboard player. The group then got to work rehearsing their instruments and were just about to prepare for the release of their next album when this happened. SES and Finkel bursted onto the scene in 1998, kickstarting the trend of cute and innocent girl groups. Upon seeing the massive popularity of these girl bands, DR Music also decided to hop on the bandwagon and completely abandoned Baby Box's band idea in favor of a sugary sweet concept. Additionally, by this point, the company had also added 17-year-old Shim Eunjin and 16-year-old Kan Miyeon to the group, which had lowered the average age of Baby Box from 20 years old to just under 18 years old. It was said that at the time, Yi Hee Jung, who by this point had just turned 30, was actually like kind of unsure about the group's new direction, and had even asked producers, quote, My age is like this, how do I debut alongside these kids? Indeed, this was a very valid concern. And so, what did the company do? Why, of course, they decided that Hee Jung could just lie about her age in hopes that it would help her fit in better with the rest of her group. Now obviously, because of Hee Jung's mature features, it would have been too unrealistic for her to claim that she was 17 or 18 years old like the rest of her bandmates. However, with the help of hair and makeup, the strategic use of sunglasses, and with a little bit of acting from Hee Jung herself, it was agreed upon that perhaps she could scrape by as a 20 year old. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was how Hee Jung ended up taking on the identity of a 20 year old Yi guy. As you can imagine, fans were outraged to learn that they had been deceived like this, and the story absolutely blew up. I mean, how can it not, right? Eventually, DR Music was forced to respond to the backlash on Baby Vox's fan cafe, where they confirmed the truth about Yi Guy slash Yi Hee Jung's identity. In their statement, they explained that Baby Vox needed a member who could lead the group after all the oldest members from the original lineup had left, and they believed that Yi Hee Jung could fill that position easily thanks to her past experience and maturity. A press conference was allegedly also held, where Yi Hee Jung tearfully apologized to the public, claiming that she had lied about her age only because she needed to debut in order to pay for her father's medical bills. Despite all of this, however, fans were still not convinced, and many of them even began demanding for her immediate removal from Baby Box. As the backlash continued to pile on, it was eventually announced that Yi Hee Jung would indeed be leaving the group, after which she was replaced by Yoon Eun Hye, who at 15 years old was literally half Yi Guy's age. This would end up being Baby Vox's final and most successful lineup, with the group going on to make their mark as first generation legends with back to back hits like Killer, Get Up, and Coincidence. Which, oh my god, that song has been living in my head rent free. What wasn't living in people's heads rent free though was Yi Hee Jung. After her disastrous departure from Baby Vox, she quickly retreated out of the public consciousness for the fourth and what is believed to be the final time. Since then, her whereabouts have remained unknown. Some speculate that she became a mother, while others claim that she opened her own restaurant. However, none of this has been confirmed. I mean, for all we know, she could very well still be with DR Music, preparing for her re 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 debut, possibly as a backup member for Black Swan. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, that could actually be a good idea, especially considering Black Swan's never ending lineup changes. Oh, and for those of you asking, I am planning to do a part 3 of my Black Swan slash Rania series, but I'm just waiting for more stuff to go down. I'm sure more stuff is going to go down. But anyways, that wraps up the story of Yi Guy and her legendary age scandal. Looking back at the situation now, I honestly can't help but feel kind of sorry for her. I mean, obviously it was wrong for her to lie about her age, and I can understand that fans felt deceived, but let's face it, had she debuted with her real age, she more than likely would have still gotten criticism for quote, being too old. 
I guess it just goes to show the societal pressures and ageism that many women face, especially in the entertainment industry. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Thank you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to watch reaction videos and other bonus content, then be sure to check that out on my Patreon.